think it's the right thing to do or you think there's going to be a benefit to it, just do it because the chances are you'll be fine. And you think, oh, hang on a minute, maybe I can do this more. I mean, how long ago did you start building on YouTube? I've pretty much just hit the 10 year mark. I've been on YouTube for 10 years. I can vividly remember trying to hit 100 subscribers. If you cannot see yourself doing this for X amount of weeks, months, years, stop doing it now because you're just wasting your time. If all you do is YouTube and YouTube revenue is your only income, that's a terrible idea. But I'm pissed off at myself for not doing what I said I was going to do for myself. That's the most important thing is that when you say you're going to do something for yourself, you actually commit and you go in and you do that. When you go through horrible times, it makes you better. It makes you more resilient. And then you're able in the future when you do have, you know, other hard times, other hardships, other things that go against you to, to push through that or to bounce back or to make, you know, make good of it. I've turned down loads of, I've turned down some huge, huge sponsorships, like huge amounts of money for the easiest, smallest, quickest things, right? But I, I felt like it massively didn't align my, with my brand. If you say, I haven't got time to do this or I can't do this, what you mean is I don't want to do it, basically, right? If you if you set yourself a goal and you don't achieve it, it's because you didn't want to. But like my wife, that's why I made my channel. But when I got into doing athletics, she's the one that suggested making a YouTube channel. Quick one before we jump into this podcast, do me a solid favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and drop a comment below this video. If you're looking to remove images, videos, search results, or fake accounts online, go to contentremoval.com. But don't take my word for it. Here's Hormozy. Frank, you're a legend. I just saw this. Layla also thinks you're a legend, which in my mind means you're... <laughs> <laughs> which also which means you're a double legend in my mind. If you get my wife to think you're a legend, then you're you're extra cool in my mind. Dude, thank you so much, genuinely. That was um such a pain. And we are back and we are in a new location and this podcast is is one I promised to bring you in person a long time ago. I brought it to you on Zoom last time. I wasn't happy about doing the Zoom, but this time I've got the legend himself, Matt Morsier in the house, in his own gym. Welcome, Ow. my man. Welcome. I imagine now you're playing like celebratory music over this clip. Probably there's like confetti coming down. Maybe like there's a crown. Yeah, like I reckon I've overlaid you with like... You know, probably, podium, probably, maybe. probably your torso out to get yeah. engagement and everything yeah. else, mate. Nice. You know, nice. gene genetic genius and all that stuff, yeah. mate. But I'll tell you what, that that tricep workout that you just put me through has absolutely savaged me. Well, that's misleading. It was a push. It wasn't just a. I'm not a psychopath. I don't just train triceps. It was like a push workout. But at the end, we did do triceps. Yeah, we did a little superset, a juicy little tricep push down superset with like a. What do you even call that? I don't know what it's called. It's some kind of like basically holding on to a. A barbell that's fixed in a rack and you're kind of it's like almost like a little swallow press up kind of thing well yeah, that that and then we did you savage my shoulders on that um you did leg leg press shoulder press which i've never ever seen yes, done mate. in my life and yes. you're an absolute nutter in the gym and if you want to listen to matt's journey obviously we'll go that's that's more on the last podcast but this one i'll just You've obviously done so much in the last year, launched your energy drink and brand, um, developed more into the app. You're obviously doing a lot more content as well. Like what is, it, when you've done so much um, in the last 12 months, like what is one of the biggest pieces of learning that you've had in the last 12 months from all that? Um, it's <laughs> a broad question. I think like, like learning in, so it's hard, it's like super cliched. I think one thing, yeah, is that what, what, what I've learned, I think it's very common people learn when they do, I don't know, entrepreneurial stuff, yeah, is that you're never going to be like fully satisfied. I think people are always chasing like, oh, I really want to achieve this outcome, this goal, whether it's like a monetary goal or like a, a growth of a company or like the growth of a social media channel, whatever it is. Uh, invariably, when you, when you achieve that goal, you know, that's great. But then very shortly that novelty wears off and then you're just left with like a hole and you need to go and do something else. And that's the irony of like that, of chasing stuff all the time. You need to have that to be successful, but you also need to have the ability to like, oh, again, it's so cliche, but like, you know, enjoy and be present in the process. Because otherwise what happens is you just like skipping parts of your life. You're like, oh, I can't wait for this cool thing that's going to happen in six months. And then the six months is gone and you've achieved it. And then you're like, oh, I've just six months gone. Do you know what I mean? So trying to be really aware and like actually you know living doing stuff rather than just always trying to chase stuff because you're gonna die at some point and then it's just done do you know what I mean so I t yeah I tend to find that it, myself even mate I get too busy in the moment and I forget how far I've come it's like me and you yeah. were talking about a situation outside yeah. of the podcast this morning and it's like and I kind of reminded you mate 
you know, X amount of years ago before you had the YouTube channel, you was a PE teacher. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? To see how far you've you've come, and yeah. now it's just the pro- when you get these bigger problems in your life, and then you kind of forget. Oh, you know, you, you think yeah, this is yeah. a problem. It's not really a. It's not really yeah. an actual problem. Yeah. No, you're but, right. Absolutely right. And, and and like as well, like yeah, you know, h- hitting milestones or achieving things, like you said, you're exactly right that going back to what I just said there is that you do that and then the novelty wears off and then you want the next thing and, and you don't you don't take a second to be like oh, hang on a minute yeah look what I'm doing now contrasted with what I was doing five years ago even a few years ago like it is it's easy to just yeah assess what you're doing based on where you are now rather than like oh actually look where I was where however long ago like compared to what I'm doing now that's pretty wild I mean how long ago did you start building on YouTube so I, I've literally I've pretty much just hit the 10 year mark so i've been on youtube for 10 years and that's like posting f- pretty frequently in fact the first the first few months was i didn't know what i was doing but pretty soon i started posting like training you know footage and from all from very early on i was posting there was times when i post five videos a week like i've been posting every week frequently every week for pretty much 10 years and obviously a long time man. yeah it's, it's a, it's a dedicated it's, it, but like anything you do, mate, you have to dedicate yourself to it to be yeah. able to get what you've got out of it, you know. But it just goes to show you what kind of velocity you have to post at and how much you have to graft to be able to iterate and get the kind of following that you have built across all these platforms. Yeah. What are you up to now on YouTube? So YouTube, I'm on 2.2 2 million subscribers. Yeah. Which is, which again, like, to get complacent, but that's wild. Like, I can remember, I can vividly remember trying to hit 100 subscribers. I remember having, like... Uh, 71 subscribers and thinking right I need to get 29 more to get to 100 how am I going to find 29 more people like that's I, I vividly remember doing that and like if that point you'd said to me even if you'd said you're going to have 10,000 subscribers I'd be like that's fucking wild do you know what I mean so to have 2.2 2. 2 mil is like I can't even comprehend so just for the people out there that are listening to this to give them some perspective like there's some people obviously listening to this that are trying to grow businesses they're trying to grow social medias they're trying to grow something in their life that they that they love that they perhaps can't fully see the vision for yet what what would your advice be to them then if they're in that process right now and they're thinking to themselves fucking hell like you know how am I going to get to this how am I going to get to that what would you what would your kind of advice be yeah so I think it's a few things I think firstly the the ultimate thing really is to be prepared for that like if you're not if you're not willing to put a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice into it don't do it because do you know what I mean you're just setting yourself up to fail like to be honest ha- obviously when I started if I'd known this was going to happen obviously I would do it but had I known that I was going to have you know four years of making no money and doing I, I was doing for probably three years of that four years I was doing a full-time job worth of hours like a solid 30 40 hours a week on YouTube and I got zero money from it i was spending money on stuff cameras and videos and stuff so i made a massive loss and that was a not many people you'd be if you analyze that it's a, it's a very unusual thing to do to, to work a full-time job for three years and get no money from it you wouldn't normally do that right you're, you're speaking to a man that's fucking yeah. doing it like yeah, I'm, it, it, I'm living it bro like yeah and that that's basically if you mm. are not prepared to it might not do that but it, it could be that it could be more than that so if you are not willing to do that initially probably don't do it because that's what it's that's what it may take you know i think one of the things that i've learned from doing content myself and and trying to produce the best podcast that i can produce is like when when i started it i said to myself you have to you have to be willing to do this for 10 years otherwise don't fucking start a day and yeah. I think there's too many people out there starting stuff where 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 they, where they wouldn't commit to it for ten years. And yeah. I think that's I think that's I think that is the the time is the critical piece that people miss. I think you need to be willing because I've spoken to other YouTubers like yourself uh, that have had massive success like you, and they say that there's a massive hockey stick in growth. And I think that goes for business, that goes for YouTube, it goes for anything. There's a massive hockey stick towards the I don't know five six year mark. There's something happens that yeah. the compounding comes in. Yeah, I mean, that, the other thing to bear in mind is that it's not a guarantee. It's not a case of, oh, if I work for five years, I'll get success. You might not. That's the other thing. Do you know what I mean? You need to be prepared for that. You might not. Like, it, if everyone got that same success, everyone would do it. It's not that simple. Like, it may not. You know what I mean? You still have to have 
obviously you have to be good at it. You have to be making good content. You have to be doing it consistently. There's so many yeah. other variables and other factors that go into it. But assuming you are making good stuff and you are, you know, good at what you do, then yes, if you put the work in, there's a strong chance you're going to get you're going to get a good outcome. The other thing as well is that it, sh it yeah, it might be hard. It might be a slog at times, but it, you should be enjoying it. Like the whole point of chasing that, you know, elusive outcome, like that passion, something you you want to do, you want to be, you think you're good at. You should at least to some extent enjoy it. Like it shouldn't be like, oh, every day, oh my god, I got to go and do this again to try and get the outcome. If that's how it feels, then don't do it because what's the point? Do you know what I mean you should enjoy it? Like the thing you're doing, whether it's YouTube or podcasting or whatever, it needs to be sustainable. Same as like you know, like a diet. People say, oh yeah, I'm doing this like, what's one of that? It's like a fast 800. You eat 800 calories a day, right? Which is absolutely ridiculous that even exists, but. If you if someone does that, obviously it's not sustainable. There's no way you can maintain that, right? If you cannot see yourself doing this for X amount of weeks, months, years, stop doing it now because you're just wasting your time. Do you know what I mean? It has to be, you have to make it sustainable. So if it is ridiculously hard and you are literally killing yourself, that's not, it's not working. It's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? It has to be sustainable. I think it has to... Um, give you consistent energy as well like it has to feed you because what like the at the end of the day you're not going to be getting the 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 dopamine hits from the so-called success because you're not going to have that success in the early days of the business of the youtube of the, whatever you're building so you have to have something that that actually lights you up in the initial period just to kick start so that you can dedicate yourself yeah. to it i think it's very important like yeah we, it we, is important and you, you're right like if i make a video now or a bit of content now and it involves me doing something in public or something awkward or something hard or something, whatever. Um, it's much easier for me to do it and to justify it because I know the outcome. I've already, you know, I know it's going it, to, there's a good outcome for me. Do you know what I mean? Whereas going back like eight, nine years, if I'm going out filming a video in public, that was hard to justify because, you know, I've got a newborn son, I've got a mortgage, and I've got a, a wife and a job and stuff. And I'm having to go out to film a video in public that's then going to get like a hundred views. Yeah. It's very hard to justify that because why the fuck would you do that? Do you know what I mean? What What are you doing? Like go and do a normal job. That's how it feels. And that's what everyone else thinks at the same time. So yeah, you're right. Like that, it, that does make it much harder because when you're not getting, you know, when you're not getting any outcome, any desirable outcome from that, why would you do that? Do you know what I mean? What gave you that initial f calling to do it though? Uh, so I used to be an athlete. I did long and triple jump for like almost 10 years. That was like my life. I wanted to be like an Olympic triple jumper. Um, and I got injured. And I couldn't do it anymore. And when I, that just left a massive void in my life. Do you know what I mean? So it's actually my wife says that suggested, why don't you just make YouTube videos? Back in the day at that point, I didn't even know what YouTube was. I knew what it was, but I was, you know, it was not really what it is now. I didn't really know much about it. Um, I've always been like an extrovert and like, you know, uh, I like, you know, like a show off I was always like a, a clown at school you know I like people laughing at me watching me not in a creepy way um and so I just started making videos like, I didn't have any plan like some people make you know start a, a channel with like the goal of right this is gonna be my job I'm gonna make a business I'm gonna make money I just did it as something to do literally that was it, it was as simple as that I thought it would be something to do started doing it and then after I don't know man maybe like six months when I started to get some views and you can see all the analytics and stuff and I just got obsessed with like, I'm a very obsessive guy in terms of like growth. I need to see stuff growing. Like, you know, it, I used to play football manager when I was younger. Like if you could see that growth in something like building, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just like addictive for me. So that's what got me into it. That's that's why, that's why going back to your point earlier, when you were talking about, you know, if you do it for four years, five years, there's no guarantee. There, there is a guarantee if you improve it at 1% a week or 1% daily. I mean, you yeah. can, you can certainly, you're certainly going to be somewhere. Yeah. You might not be, it might not be exactly the same vision as what you had, but you're going to be a lot further ahead than, than you are right now. And yeah, of course, I think people forget the skills that you learn on the way to, the, to, to, to that to that thing you know yeah. uh, the, the amount of editing skills and business skills and mindset stuff that you must have picked up i mean what what have you done to kind of because obviously the, 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 the mo there's a mindset piece to your success the massive mindset piece what did you do to give yourself the mindset that you have now so to keep to keep you going there must have been some development in that area yeah i don't know i i, I think a lot of it is like innate genetic do you know what I mean i think some people are I think if you were to assess like, you know, success or what is so-called successful people, if you were to assess them, I think lots of them would have similar traits uh, 
and different traits to other people that maybe aren't haven't been as successful in like a business sense i think people are wired a certain way like for me like i work very hard i'm happy to do things like i'm a very obsessive guy like i have to fit if i start a task i have to finish it you know so i think those things lend them like there are lots of downsides to that but they lend themselves to being successful because basically if I want to do something, I'm going to keep doing that thing until it happens. You know what I mean? Like that's the way I am. Um, so I don't think, I, I, I probably have changed and evolved over time for sure, but I think a lot of the traits that I have now, I had 10 years ago, I guess they've just been honed and do you know what I mean? Like they've changed to be more specific to the, because what I'm doing is it's still quite a niche really for the average person. So I guess those things have changed to suit what I'm doing, but i say the underlying skill set and like traits uh, the same as they were like 10 years ago but were there any weaknesses along that along that journey obviously there, w there were weaknesses because we all have weaknesses but was there any weaknesses where you fucking like really had to struggle and kind of really had to adapt and learn and, and develop yeah definitely of course yeah so in terms of actual skills like you know I, when i started youtube i didn't know anything about like talking to a camera like I, i've always been kind of outgoing and extroverted and i like doing stuff but if i look at my first few videos fuck mate they're like terrible like my first it's the most awkward, like I've left all my videos on because I think it's funny and it's cool. I remember when I started, I'd watch other people's channels and I'd try and you could, you, on YouTube, you could search by like earlier so you could see their first videos. And I found it like motivating if some, if I was like, oh my God, that guy used to be terrible at making videos and now he's got a million subscribers. So I, I've left mine up so people can look at mine and be like, oh my God, look how shit Matt used to be and now he's doing well. Like, I, yeah, I used to be terrible at talking to the camera. I didn't know how to film it, know what cameras were good, how you hold a camera, how you edit videos, like so many things that I've learned and developed over the over the years for sure. Like that and ironically that's the beauty of YouTube is that you can learn anything. Do you know I mean you want to find out how to do anything, just type it into YouTube and there'll be a video showing you how to do it. Do you know what I mean? So I've learned all of the skills that I have now, I think, over the course of the last ten years doing that. Um but in terms of yeah, again, the underlying like traits I think are still yeah, the same. I've just kind of honed them. I think another big one as well, and this has only become relevant more recently when I've had success, is like, I'm really bad. Again, going back to the OCD obsessive nature I have, like, I'm a massive control freak. So, like, if I'm, I don't know, if I'm writing something, writing an ad, writing a caption, whatever it is, like, you know, I'll obsess over, like, spelling, grammar, punctuation, and making it exactly as I want it to be. And, and I find it very, obviously, if you do everything yourself, like, you are massively limiting your growth potential. You, you can only do so much, right? Yeah, there comes a yeah. point in anyone's, like, business growth where they have to employ people and delegate. And I am I find that really hard because I feel like people aren't going to do the job that I would do because ultimately people don't care about it as much as you do because it's your thing, you know what I mean? So I find that really hard. And that's something I've had to, like, forcibly make myself do is, like, delegate and trust people to do stuff because obviously there are people that are much better at certain things than I am so that's one thing to grow you need that manpower you need that those skill sets that I haven't I haven't got um but also just yeah handing things off and just accepting that you can't do everything and you can't control and see and monitor everything because it's not possible and if you try and do that you're just massively limiting your growth what was the hardest thing for you to let go of when you started to delegate um so my video so for i've been doing youtube for 10 years for the first eight years i filmed and edited every single video so i filmed and edited like well over a thousand videos myself that's like you know filming a video is normally a day editing a video is another day i did that for every single video um and the last couple of years of that you know i I, I at that point was one of the only channels of my size that would film and edit themselves most channels have a videographer they have an editor I, I couldn't hand that off. I was just terrified that they would do a shit job. They wouldn't be able to edit it in the same way I would. It, you know, I, I just didn't think it was possible. And it got to a point where it was just like, you know, I, I couldn't, the amount of time I was spending on YouTube videos, I couldn't do anything else. So I found a guy to film and edit for me. And I, I guess it was lucky. He did a really good job for me. So he worked for me for a year. Then he moved on. I've got a new guy now, CJ, who's doing an awesome job. Um, and again, that that, the amount of, Firstly, the amount of time probably saves me 20 hours a week of work, right, which is an, just enormous, right? But stress, like, before I got a videographer editor, the amount of stress I was under was like, it sounds mad, but like it was intense. Like, being, going like viral, blowing up on YouTube. So look at someone like Jesse James West in the fitness scene who's like blown up recently, right? 
he's doing an, an amazing job, but I know he, he his stress levels would be unmanageable. Like it's full on trying to do, you know, constantly every single video has got to be viral. You're just traveling around constantly trying to find viral content to make. You've set the bar so high. Every video is getting over a million views. It's very hard to sustain that. I did that for a period of time and it served its purpose, but you can't, you die if you keep doing that. Do you know what I mean? You look at Logan Paul and Jake Paul, like you literally have a breakdown. You can't keep doing that. So when I found a videographer and an editor and they took the stress of filming stuff and editing stuff away, like literally felt like a different person. Do you know what I mean? The amount of stress that was like alleviated, that was lifted off my shoulders was like mad. So yeah. I wish I'd done it earlier in hindsight. I, I, I like as well when you when you get someone like, because obviously all my, I don't do no video editing and, and it's like, it's nice to get someone young who who grows with you and, and can and can learn and, and like uh, really encapsulate their passion into your content and grow through it as well. Like yeah. that, that's that's kind of what I've noticed with, with my editor and stuff. Yeah. I think it's very important that you get someone who's on the journey too. Otherwise you get, you, you get, yeah, you just you could just get some random person, but it's th not all video editors are created equal. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot out there that just kind of yeah. go through the go through the motions. Yeah, it goes it goes both ways. Obviously, on the one hand, if you get someone more experienced, initially they're going to be better, right? But then, like you said, they're set in their ways. They like to edit a certain way, like to yeah. film a certain way, and if that doesn't time with what you want, then that's a bit awkward, right? Whereas you get someone who's newer and younger then they're maybe going to make more mistakes and not be as good initially. But then, like you said, you grow together and they learn to do things how you want. And then it's, yeah, potentially is more fruitful in the in the long run, yeah. But I love the fact of how lately you've started to pivot more from like the just the personal brand, i.e., you know, yourself. And then you've pivoted now into like the energy drink space and you've obviously, you've had the app for a while. I mean, was, was that because you knew that your you know, if you kept going on YouTube and just it just being you, you, you were capped at a certain level? Um, yeah, so it's a couple of things. So firstly, um, from like a monetary standpoint, so YouTube, if you just make YouTube videos and, and that's all you do, firstly, you're limiting. Obviously, you can make loads of money. I've had months in YouTube where I've made a lot of money, right? But it's still a limit. There's a, there's a ceiling on that, right? Secondly, it's extremely... Um, uh, it fluctuates, right? So if you if, if all you do is YouTube and YouTube revenue is your only income, that's a terrible idea. So I, I know people that have like their YouTube is all they do, and their YouTube revenue is paying for their rent and stuff, yeah. And then overnight, YouTube cuts the revenue in half, which they can do. You're, you're fucked. You know what I mean? So firstly, I wanted to have other things in place. I didn't want to rely on YouTube because it's very volatile. Do you know what I mean? It can, you can get the same number, you could get a million, 10 million views in one month, 10 million views in the next month and get a third of the ad revenue. That's how it works. It just, there's so many other factors, right? So it's very risky just relying on that income. Um, but also just in terms of growth, like I wanted to, I wanted to do more stuff. Like I, I killed myself getting my channel to where it was and getting my platforms to where they were. I wanted to reap the rewards and get the most out of that. Do you know what I mean? Because you could have two people that both have a similar size channel. One of them could be making 10 times the revenue of the other guy off other stuff, that, especially in the fitness world. There's so many things, so many ways to monetize it. So I wanted to, to build other things that brought another revenue stream that went on forever. Like what I'm very mindful. I'm, I'm probably not going to make YouTube videos forever. Right. I want to, if I want it, I want to be able to stop. Right. So I want things that are making me income that are their own thing. So like Morsia energy is going to be an enormous global energy drink brand that just brings in revenue that doesn't, if I want to talk about it and promote it and do stuff, I can, but I don't have to and it still just carries on. It's you know still, what I mean? Yeah, it's still, it's still separate to you. Yeah, it's like the same as the app, the Morsi app. Like, it already is. It's doing great. Like, it's amazing, but I want to continue growing and it's just its own thing. The Morsi app is an amazing app. It's the best fitness app on the planet. I can leave it and it's going to bring in revenue for, for the next 50 years. I haven't got to do anything to it. Do you know what I mean? But if I want to, if I want to dip in and promote it and do stuff, I can do that, but I haven't got to like that's the plan. I want those things in place so that I can do, I mean, I'm very fortunate right now because of the work I've put in, I can do whatever I want, right? I haven't got, tomorrow I could just stop doing stuff and do nothing and I'm good. I'm, I'm good for life, right? However, firstly, I don't want to, like I'd be bored as fuck, right? I like doing stuff. Um, I want those revenue streams there so I know I have that. Um, and also it's just fun. Like it's, do you know what I mean? Like people talk about like, so I spoke to a guy the other day who um, he started to sneak energy and he sold it and like he did so well. But like, so I was thinking, oh, you know, would I sell more energy? Like 
I don't think I want to. Like, you know, even if I got offered loads and loads of money, like, if I sold it, what am I going to do? I'd have to find something else to do. I mean, I, that's, I find it fun. Like, building stuff and growing stuff is so addictive and so fun. That process, that's what I want. It's not... It is about the money, but it's not. Do you know what I mean it could be any? It could be any metric. I just like seeing growth, so like I, I, I need that in my life. Was there a bit of a thought process between attaching your personal name to it? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought, as I said, it. yeah, yeah. You're right. So obviously, the fact it's <laughs> called Water Energy is my name. I mean, it's it's a very it's, there aren't really any other mortars, so it's quite a unique name. So it doesn't. It's not necessarily associated with me because also I'm like Matt does fitness people a lot of people don't even know my name do you know what I mean so I think it's fine in that sense um but that's why I like it it's cool that it is my name do you know what I mean it's cool going into a shop and seeing it on a shelf and it's my name like that's pretty cool I get a buzz off that um but, but you're right there are some I guess complications with that but but obviously when you're building it because obviously you have to with the with, you know you've been in business long enough to know now that when you're starting something you have to think about you know th this is a saleable asset in the future did when you attach your personal name to it, it becomes less of a saleable asset. Because I've listened to um, podcasts with David Lloyd, who owns David Lloyd Gyms, and he yep. says one of the biggest regrets in his life was selling his name, because he had to sell his name when he sold his gyms, right? Yeah. And it's one of the biggest regrets of his life. I mean, if you sell the rights to your name at Morse Your Energy, when you get it to X amount of 50, 100 mil, whatever revenue, you've just sold the rights to your name, essentially. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Uh, but I think I'd have that anyway. Even if it wasn't, even if it was called Something Else Energy, I'd still it would still be my thing. And so I'd still have that, the, the the thought of like giving it to someone else and they have control over what it does, that would like terrify me because I hate it. Like it's mine. What if they do something weird, yeah. they ruin it, they change it in a horrible way. Like, do you know what I mean? So this that is, would scare me anyway. So this is one of those businesses then that is it, that you're building for, for, for consistent cash flow and brand not to sell. Uh, I have no plans to sell it. And like I said, even if someone was to offer me down the line, like loads to buy, I, I don't know like what would be my reason for selling it? Do you know what I mean? Like right yeah. now, the reason you sell something is to make money, right? Like I don't really need that money. So what do you mean? There's only yeah. so much money you need. Like, I, I, like, like it's it's fun, you know, growing and making more money. But to be honest, it's more for me. It's more like the the growing the company. That's what I enjoy yeah. doing. And if and if I've spoken to people who have done that numerous times, right? And what seems to be the general consensus is like the initial bit is the fun bit, growing it to a certain point. Then when it gets really big and you've got a huge team, maybe it's not as fun then. So maybe that would be a good time to get out. I don't know. But all I know is that I'm doing more through energy because it's fun and because I want to grow it, not because I want to make loads of money. Because if I wanted to make loads of money, an energy drink like is is especially in the first year, you're not making money like the margins are pathetic. Do you know what I mean, it's energy drinks, any drinks, they're heavy. So when you ship drinks, it's expensive. And so you, it's very hard to make money. You need to sell millions and millions and millions and millions of cans to make a good like profit. Do you know what I mean? So if I wanted to make money, I'd make some shitty Matt Does Fitness merch or something that's cheap and easy to make that I can put a big margin on. I'm doing it because I think it's sick and I like it's an amazing product and I think it's fun to yeah get out of there, you know? Uh, and, and that and that's the and that's the beauty. When you when you are making enough cash anyway, you can actually afford to operate. A lot of your life, from what I've seen and know of you now, is I think you've done a lot of lifestyle by design stuff. So like everything you do has been highly thought out to and optimized to how you want to live your life, right? Yeah. So give me a bit of an insight into into that thought process because obviously like we we talked before the podcast about some things you would and wouldn't do because it takes too much time away from you and this and the other. It just gives the audience a bit of an insight into your lifestyle by design. Yeah, exactly that. Like I think that's and that was going back to Morsha Energy. Like I wanted to do a, I wanted to do a new product. I wanted to do something that people would buy again and again. Like something you know, in the past we did earbuds and they were really good. But when you buy earbuds, you don't buy them again for years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I just managed to get someone to buy them, and now they're gone. Like whereas with a drink, if they like it, they're going to buy it again and again and again. You get that repeat custom, and it just builds up and builds up. So I wanted something along those lines. I've drunk an energy drink before I train every day for the last 10 years, right? So I was like, why don't I just make my own one that's better than this? And then like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I did. Like, that was the reason. Like you said. Most taste like shit, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. They really do. So I, yeah, so I, I made someone that's much better. But I wanted stuff that, like you said, is not, I don't want to go and make like a, a tooth whitening project because I don't, I, uh, product because I don't use that. I want stuff that I use that makes sense and fits into my life, like you said there, because... 
that's yeah that the whole going back to what we said ages ago about like when you're doing something making it sustainable i want my life to be enjoyable and sustainable i don't want to be doing things that are, are really hard that i can't keep doing for a while do you know what i mean so but that makes sense in that so sense so what are you optimizing your life for at this at this moment in time that you're in so my my goals right now are like i said to grow the morse app to continue to grow the morse app to continue to grow morse energy um to continue making social media content which helps facilitate those things um but to do it in a way i'm trying to get m- i'm trying to make it more and more sustainable so basically these things are not reliant on me all the time to do everything do you know what I mean because that's what's to get to this point i've had to do you know pretty much everything and it's all yeah, reliant all on the me. heavy lifting and yeah. if i disappeared tomorrow things would suffer i want to get it to a point where i could disappear and it's cool everything carries on do you know what I mean that's the goal because at that point like at the moment there's a lot of pressure on me i, I enjoy most of it like sometimes i'm like oh, i wish i could just not have to do this but most of the time it is i love it it's awesome but it's nice to be doing stuff because you want to do it rather than you have to do it. Do you know what I mean? Same with anything. A professional footballer, everyone thinks that's the best job in the world. It is an amazing job. I guarantee there are a lot of professional footballers who don't love their job because any job, after all, you love playing football, as soon as you have to do it because it's your job, immediately takes the novelty off. And after a while, if you want to if you want to make something less enjoyable, do it as your job. And straight away, yeah. or at least at some point, it, it loses that novel, you know, feeling because it's no longer a hobby you're doing out of choice it's a job and it, you have to do it and when you have to do something it's not as fun do you know what, mate? i've i've turned down money to money monetary things for this podcast because i didn't want to make it a job too soon and 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 it'd be something that's not aligned or i'm not passionate about do you know what i'm saying yeah. like fully i fully have to be involved in it do you know what i mean because yeah. this when you're building something you fucking love it has to just has to has to light you up as well yeah. what, you, what you're doing alongside it and if it doesn't feel like that you got it you you have to even though sometimes it's painful because we're talking we, you know we could be talking hundreds of thousands of us dollars here it's like you have to turn that down because you have to see the bigger picture yeah the longer run and sometimes it's hard for us as humans to do that yeah no it goes again there's different sides to it so what i've said there in an idea so that's a good example of sponsorships right I've turned down loads of, I've turned down some huge, huge sponsorships, like huge amounts of money for the easiest, smallest, quickest things, right? But I, I felt like it massively didn't align my, with my brand and like the, it's the bigger picture. So a lot of the time, yes, you want to pick and choose, you want to do things that work for you, things that align with your brand, things that take you the where you want to be. However, you know, there are some exceptions. If there is, for example, a sponsorship that maybe, you know, you don't love the product or you, maybe it's not your favorite thing, or you don't completely agree with that thing, if it if it's going to serve a purpose and it's going to help you go and do other stuff that's then going to get you to where you want to be, then maybe you can do it. Do you know what I mean? So there are some exceptions. You don't always have to be like black and white, this is what I'm doing, that's it. Because that might, you know, it might be like a cut in your nose or to spite your face. Sometimes you yeah. can take a hit and do things maybe you don't <coughs> want to do or maybe aren't your... Going back to YouTube, when, when I blew up, like there were some videos that I didn't really wouldn't have been my preference. I didn't love making them, but I knew they were going to do well. And so I made them and they did well and that got me to where I am now. So you can make exceptions, you know, within reason. Don't go and do something wild that's horrendous. But if there are some things that maybe you wouldn't do in an ideal world, but are going to get you closer to where you want to be, then yeah, by all means, definitely think about doing it. I think I've had to, um, I've let my pride cost me a lot of money in my life. Like, to be honest, like, yeah. it, like my pride's cost me Hundreds of thousands, hundreds yeah. of thousands. But, but then that goes both ways. Yes, that could be a hindrance in that sense, but then without that, you wouldn't be where you are. Do you know what I mean? Like going back to what I said about myself, like I have a problem with like handing, you know, letting delegate and letting people do stuff. But if I didn't have that, then my stuff wouldn't be as good because it, I was like, well, I don't give a shit. It's whatever. Do you know what I mean? You need to have some of those things. Yes, they're a hindrance, but ultimately that's got you to where you are. Without, that, without those skills, you wouldn't I, be like that. I think we all have this, we all have a path that we have to, that we have to tread and it's a kind of like a it's like a pre-written universal type thing like you you just everything happens for a reason mate at the end of the day like to serve you like we were talking about before the podcast with some other stuff that's going on in, in your life it's like you know you can you can there's there's lessons in stuff isn't there you know the things, yeah. so, so sometimes things that that don't seem rosy on the on the front end actually fucking can help you see a lot of other stuff on the back yeah. end when you well, break well yeah out. like if i hadn't so i i injured my back i had like a prolapse disc i had to stop doing athletics 
had I not had that, I wouldn't have done YouTube. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I would have had a, you know, a good life, would be happy, all, all good, but I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, nowhere near, do you know what I mean? If I, when I was teaching in my formative YouTube years, there was a point where it was looking like YouTube was not the thing to do because I was, a, as a teacher, you don't, you not, shouldn't be a YouTuber as a teacher. I was, I'd go into like safeguarded meetings and it was like, rule number one, have no social media, don't you? And I'm there like vlogging, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> that wasn't, a, yeah. I was lucky that my school and the, and the headmaster of my school were amazing. They were awesome. They were super accommodating and that, that helped me out so much. But if that hadn't been the case and it had been a normal school, I probably would have stopped YouTube and then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now again. So there are, do you know I mean, lots of instances of that where it's like a sliding doors kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Mate, I, I, and and this is this is this is the beautiful thing about life. You don't know. You don't. Like I said before, there's so, there's some things that are happening to all of you who are listening to this right now in your life that perhaps don't seem like the rosiest things in the fucking tree. But essentially, that's all leading on to things down the down the track. Like yeah. Matt's financial freedom and his ability to be anywhere in the world and earn a vast amount of dollars or pounds is predicated on the fact that he injured his back and got into YouTube. And that's what started a whole series of events in his life that allowed him... To, to live the life he lives now like as simple as that and, and that was a that was a bad thing that led to a phenomenal thing. yeah uh, and even like you said there even if like going back to the back injury or any you know any hardships you have i mean yeah there are some exceptions where it's just out outright shit but generally speaking there are some learnings and like you you know just like resilience developing your resilience and your ability to do because like even even my job now, any you know, any any job, even the best job in the world, there are going to be elements of it that you don't like, that maybe aren't the thing you want to be doing, and it's important to have the ability to you know to be resilient and to do those things. Like when I used to be a teacher, lots of the kids they 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 they're resilient. They had no resilience, so they'd never you know. It comes from, you know, whatever, horrible parents, whatever it is, but they'd find something difficult and immediately just they say it done. I'm not doing that. I can't do it. Do you know what I mean? That ability to do things you don't like and do things that you find hard, that's really, really important. And you learn that and you hone that from going through shit stuff. When you go through horrible times, it makes you better. It makes you more resilient. And then you're able in the future when you do have, you know, other hard times, other hardships, other things that go against you to, to push through that or to bounce back or to make, you know, make good of it. Is, is there something in particular that you're doing in your life every day that you know serves you, but you find fucking infuriating to actually have to do it every I day? I mean, okay, so, so training. So I train yeah. pretty much every day. I'd say the majority of my workouts I don't want to do. Like when I'm, when I'm uh, you know, I, I normally train at like 10, 11. Before I train, not always, sometimes I'm up for it, but I would say at least every other session, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I can't be asked. I'd rather stay at home and do some work here. I'd rather go and hang out with my son, whatever it is. That's what I'd rather be doing at that moment in time. But I know that that training serves a purpose. I know that firstly, you know, when I'm done training, I'm going to feel amazing. I'm going to be really, really grateful I did it. Secondly, it's going to help me maintain, grow my physique and my strength, which helps everything, you know, from a business sense. Um, and thirdly, you know, just health-wise, there's so many other benefits for to doing that. So that's like a, a means to an end, right? I'll do that. I'll do training because I know it makes me feel better. It makes me a better person. It makes me able to make more money. So that investment, that hardship is, you know, serves a purpose. It's worth doing. Training is something I've done fucking pretty practically all my life. And in recent years, I've found it harder and harder and harder to, to keep getting up for it. Do you know what I mean? But like, like you say, you have to just keep fucking turning up and doing it and doing, just doing something, making that concerted effort. Because I think without the training element, it's like your mind's fucked. Yeah. Uh, if, if, I don't, exactly if, I, if I don't, yeah. if I don't, if I don't train, I'm angry. I'm fucking stressed. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I say the dumbest shit at the dumbest times when I, when I know I shouldn't say it because I'm, I'm pissed off at myself for not, for, for not doing what I said I was going to do for myself. That's that's the most important thing, is that yeah. when you say you're going to do something for yourself, you actually commit and you go in and you do that. Yeah, I, I think a lot a lot of like, you know, bodybuilders or people that train and have trained religiously go on to be very successful. And it's not a coincidence. You've If you're someone that can make yourself do something that's horrible for an hour or two hours every single day, you're probably going to be fucking good at other stuff, right? Because you're able to do that. Going back to what I said there about resilience and being able to go through hardships and, and you know, push yourself and do uncomfortable things. That is a whole collective of people that are doing that every day. I have done it for years and years and years. So if you transfer that onto running a business or to whatever it is, building something, 
it's a very transferable skill set. You know what I mean? You're basically good at doing something that's really hard that you don't want to do every single day. And that's an amazing skill to have. And I think that's the key takeaway from this is like you, you just pick one thing in your life right now that you can, that you can, you know, commit to and dedicate yourself to and whether you fucking want to do it or you don't want to do it or whatever happens that day, you just turn up and do it. If you pick one thing and then just build up the stack, the habits from there, you know, you, cause you can't, everyone tries to set, 16 different habits for yeah, yeah. in a week and then can't do it like just commit yourself to going to the gym every day and doing a 20 minute workout and then next week 30 minutes and then next week okay get your nutrition right and then the week just stack the habits because that's exactly that. that's yeah, how yeah. you've that's that's how you've operated your life and you've just yeah. stacked habits essentially, yeah. essentially to, exactly to be successful that. yeah you're, you're right like that's and that's really important people yeah going what you said there like people come to this oh, oh I want to lose fat and I want to build muscle like that's very unlikely that's going to happen. So choose one of them. R rather than trying to be like jack of all trades, choose one thing and execute it really well. And when you've got that down, then drip feed more things. That's exactly right. Like, that's what you want to do. If you've never trained in your life before, don't be like, right, I'm going to train six days a week, two hours a day. Train twice a week for half an hour. That's a great starting place. You're still going to make progress on that and then slowly build it up. Like, And this applies to every area of your life, whether yeah. it's your business, your mindset, whether you're doing breath work on the beach every morning. You know, if you, if you say you're going to do it for yourself, make sure you go and fucking do it for yourself. That's, that's, what, that's where I've fell down in my personal life on certain things. It's like it, every time I've broken promises to myself, but that, that, that's, that's led me down wrong paths. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like when you make a commitment to yourself, make sure you stick to the community. If you say you're going to be up at six for that run, don't fucking miss it and then and then negate that because now because now what you're doing is you're reinforcing that you're not someone who's committed to your own yeah. goals and that's where you f really fuck yourself. Yeah, but, but again, again, going back to what we said before, like in terms of sustainability, stuff you're doing shouldn't be ridiculously hard to the point where you're like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, it should be stuff that you're able to do. And if it's not, then you've got to question your your reason for doing it. If you're doing something that you hate all the time or you're having to every single... Like, people message me and say, oh, how do you get so motivated to train? The, like, it's so hard, blah, blah, blah. It's not a case of... Like, motivation is, is a fiction. It doesn't exist. It's a fictional thing. It's like an elusive. It doesn't you either want to do something or you don't when it comes yeah. down to it you want to do it or you don't right yeah. like if people say oh you know i can't train because i'm too busy like if i said to that person i will give you five million pounds if you go and sit on this chair for half an hour three days a week they do it they do it at 2 a.m in the morning they find a time to do it right that's because they want to do it because they want that outcome right so if you say i haven't got time to do this or i can't do this what you mean is i don't want to do it basically right if you if yeah. you set yourself a goal and you don't achieve it it's because you didn't want to unless your goal is like i want to turn into a dinosaur that's not gonna happen right but if your goal is a, a goal that could feasibly happen if you don't achieve it ultimately you didn't want it enough basically right yeah and and, and it can't be denied because you because you know and people are going to take this the wrong way and people say but i have children and all this that and the other but like we all have the same amount of hours in the day and there's people out there that that have like three kids i know women that have like three kids and have like seven successful businesses turning over multiple seven figures it's like well oh, they've got shit loads of stuff it's like no nah, they didn't start out that way they started out grafting and yeah. and making time that other people said they don't have to make their dream come true or facilitating the what the, the vision that they had yeah there, 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 there are some exceptions of course right there are some exceptions there are people you know people that whose parents are multimillionaires and they just get handed to them right there are other people who have horrible lives you know really unfortunate upbringing bereavements you know whatever everything goes wrong diseases all kinds of so there are exceptions of course not everyone is the same however like there are numerous instances of people that have had nothing and had everything go against them and they've still been super successful so rather than trying to think of reasons why you can't be successful just do stuff just start doing stuff put things in place do you know the best you can within your situation and then if you do that consistently for a long period of time, the chances are you'll reap the rewards. But the most important part of all of it is, is the why, the true why of why you want to achieve X, Y, Z, why you want to do X, Y, Z. Because a lot of the times, and I've spoken about this on numerous podcasts, it's like I had a goal to, to be a professional world title boxing trainer. And when I achieved it, I felt empty as fuck. And when I assessed 
why I wanted to achieve it when I actually looked backwards after I'd achieved it it was because it was all predicated on ego and me wanting to swing my dick at the highest level and look the part you know what I'm saying and do and do the, do the things it was built up on what other people would think not really what I truly wanted to do yeah. so in order to make sure that you have your ladder lent against the right wall when you go along these paths to doing these things and executing on them for fuck's sake, make sure you ask yourself a few questions why you want to actually truly do it and make sure it's not to fucking prove someone wrong. Make sure it's not for anyone else but yourself and it's for the right reason for yourself. Because a lot of people are doing things in their life that are predicated because they haven't healed the traumas of their past. You know, so they do, they do something yeah. else so they haven't healed the trauma. Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's personal preference. Like, everyone's different. Like, you're right, of course, ideally things should be like, you know, you should be motivated intrinsically or things that you are doing for yourself, ideally. But, you know, when you have children, that changes. Like, there are lots of things that change. And again, pe people are different. Like, some people, like, if you... So, for example, you would say, right, you know, someone... Going back to the boxing coaching thing, right? You maybe did it for the wrong reasons. You did it because you were trying to make people impressed with you or whatever it was, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But for some people, that might be their ultimate life goal. My my ultimate life goal is that I want people to think I'm really cool. Yeah, and I, I thought and it was my. Is, I thought it was if my that ultimate is life your goal, goal. Then that's if that makes you happy. Like different things, but you know what I mean. I have like a friend who he he does a job. He doesn't mind. He doesn't love it. He doesn't mind his job. His goal is just to make money on the weekends. He goes down to the pub, like has some drinks. That's that's it. He, he's happy. Like he he's he loves his life. That's yeah. that's his yeah. goal. And that, and if that's your goal, that's that's you don't ha you don't have to want to be a millionaire and like start companies like yeah. yeah, th yeah. There are plenty of millionaires that ha are depressed as fuck and that a hate, lot, their, a hate lot, their lives. Do you know what I mean? Lot. So don't assume just because that's what everyone else you know go to university all the the things that everyone does getting married. Don't assume that's what you should do. Do things that you want to do. It if 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 you have goals even if they're different to someone else's goals or they're not the goals that everyone else has, if they're your genuine goals, the things that make you happy, then pursue those things. Do you know what I mean? Because ultimately, I would, that's sustainable. I would say the most rounded entrepreneurs, the most rounded people that I've had in the podcast that have had success but also have what I term as intrinsic happiness, I'd say most of the people, most, especially most of the men that come on the podcast have a good woman in their life or have had a, or have a good relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? On the back end of it. I think it's very, it's 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 something I've noticed that's been highly important to a lot of men's success. I mean, how much has your, your, your internal support compass with your missus and everything helped you? Yeah, mate, path. massively. So, so my, I mean, <laughs> for a start, like my wife, that's why I made my channel. Like, I wouldn't, you know, when when I when I got injured doing athletics, and I was just bumming around for a bit, she's the one that suggested making a YouTube channel. She kind of got me to do it. Like, I don't know, but I'm, there's a strong chance I wouldn't have even done it if she hadn't have suggested that. Do you know what I mean? So that's the first thing. And then beyond that, like, she's unbelievably supportive. Like, going back to the you know the the dark days when I was like. I mean, they weren't dark days, but they, you know, in this in this context, making like multiple videos a week, um, whilst working a full time job as a teacher and training as a powerlift and raising a child and having a mortgage and all the other responsibilities that life has, doing that stuff, and then I'm like, right, I need to go and film a video. I think a lot of people, and understandably so, would be like, uh, no, can you actually, you know, help me? make some dinner or look after our child or do whatever, she was so supportive and she would always, without fail, you know, help me do it or at least not stop me doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like she was very, very, and always has been very supportive. And that's, that's been enormous because obviously, you know, I, could, like, I, I couldn't physically have done what I've done and got to this point without her, like 100%. Yeah. But, but even without that, even just the experience, I think that, gem not always, but generally speaking, the process of being in a relationship and then potentially having children you just you you mature. It makes you a more mature like person. Do you know what I mean? I think you, not always, of course, but generally speaking, if you look at you know an eighteen year old doing social media versus me doing social media, our you know our output and our approach is going to be very different because I've had life experiences and done certain things that maybe they haven't. And I think that yeah changes you as a person and informs your your actions. Yeah, I mean from the outside looking in, I mean I noticed today like with with everything and how she. And how she facilitates certain things happening in your life and, and stuff like that. And how you facilitate certain things happening for her. And just that whole dynamic. I thought, ah, this is, this is, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this repeated pattern again of of what success, what yeah, success yeah. looks like to me. is, is yeah. Essentially, like success to me looks like, you know, someone who's not only made a monetary amount, 
but he's also in great physical condition and also happy on the on the external in his in in their life and i've just noticed that that having that 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 partner that that fulfilling partner both for the women and for the men has been something that's been massively um influential in the in their success yeah yeah i think yeah uh, for sure and even just the the whole like um your generally speaking your lifestyle when you are if you're in a long-term relationship again not always but i would say the majority of the time your lifestyle is probably going to Oh, there's swings around that, but maybe lend itself better to running a business because you're more settled. You're more, again, you're more mature. You're in, you know, a place for longer. You're not, you know, maybe you're not going out and doing crazy shit as much. So, like, you're that lends itself, you know, to to, to running a company. I'd say probably more so than if you were an 18 year old going out multiple times a week drinking. That's probably not going to be as productive in terms of like building a business, mate. Uh- as a, as a as a single man as I sit here, I'm telling you now that if if you're if as a single man you're in the pursuit of women, then your everything else it falls down. Like your 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 money goes down. Your everything. I I've never been able to go in the pursuit over here of of lots of shiny objects, and then over here everything could be fucking good. Like the best the best times in my life in terms of like growth, in terms of podcast growth or any growth in my life has been you know just go celibate, bosh straight away inside 100 days you can go from number fucking 98 in the chart in one country to fucking number five by just by just concentrating on what you're meant to be fucking doing and executing it because it takes away so much admin mate life admin, yeah. texting people contacting people dates all this other bullshit that you have to go through and it just spreads your energy so thin so if you want if you, that, that's that's just how, how i've seen yeah it. But, but also it depends you know obviously it depends on the person and the relationship i'm sure there are lots of horrible relationships that definitely aren't productive but for me, like my wife, like Sarah is, like I said, she's amazing. She's awesome at so many things. And that's made me better. Like that, do you know what I mean? She yeah. works with me. We work together on stuff. She's like my ideas, man. Like it, that's, so obviously A, from a relationship standpoint, but just from a work standpoint, she contributes hugely, you know, to what we do. And with without her, we wouldn't be as like successful as we are. So that's, I've added someone to my team and it's like obviously the closest person in the world, like, it's, there's so many good things that come off the back of that. Is is there any advice you got for us on how to find the right person for your team, though? Or is that just oh, something mate, I you? Don't just, know. Is I, it, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's is so it just hard. Something, isn't is it it's just something you stumble? Yeah. You kind of just stumble into. Kind of. That's what you see, tend to find, isn't it? Do you know what I mean, when yeah. you speak to people that are in like good relationships, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, mate. I, I'm not like. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not trying to turn you into the relationship coach. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, intra- I'm, just yeah, yeah. I'm just genuinely interested, yeah. mate. Because I, like, I think it's more. Uh, again, it goes back to what you want. Do you know what I mean? Like it depends yeah. what you want. I think the problem some people have is that they, if you really want a relationship, then maybe you're going to end up settling for something less than, you know, less than because should. you're like, do you know what? I just need, yeah. I'm, as of anything, do you know what I mean? So I guess it's being patient and it's not like trying too hard. And it's again, going back to the business and the YouTube thing, accepting that it might take a while. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, yeah. Mate, there's, Mate, I've, I um, when I was in Australia towards the end of my time, I, 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 I saw this beautiful, beautiful thing. I thought maybe I could have a go of it, but I, but I went in the pursuit of my vision because I believe that when you go in the pursuit of your vision, everything else aligns up anyway. But as a, as a man, you got to be on purpose. You got to just pursue the vision, and everything else just aligns. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If it's not, it's not. You know what I mean? But you got to be in the pursuit of your ultimate vision to be on purpose as a man. Otherwise, you're fucked. Yeah. You know, yeah. you you can't yeah. you can't just you can't just sideline your vision. In just to just to um, fit into a box with a certain relationship or certain something that will fit in your life, you have to go in the pursuit, and then everything else has to align. Simple as yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But again, I, I just think I don't know. I think everyone's different. I think everything is. Uh, again, people are so eager to like have, um, you know, to, to have trends and things that there are things that like humans in this country in particular always do. Right, you always go to school. You always go to university, you always get a job, you always get married, you always have kids. That's just the thing that everyone does. It's just kind of bred through like generations. And I think people are, human nature is that you want things to be clear and dictated to you and you want to know what you should do. Yeah, yeah, people like to be led. Yeah, and so like a relationship is just what everyone assumes, you know, you should do. Now, in my experience, the relationships are great, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have plenty of people that are super happy that have done really well in life that haven't had or aren't in a relationship. You don't, 
again, don't just assume because everyone else is doing it, that's what you should do. Yeah, maybe, 100%. Maybe yeah. you don't need to do that. Like, it's you don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just, it's just, it was just interesting thing. It's just an interesting observation when you've done 100 and something, 120, 130 podcasts like I've done. It's like when you look back at yeah. highly successful men that are highly successful men that are that you see are in their full authentic light happy behind closed doors yeah it's like it's pretty stand out to me that most of them have a good woman in their life that 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 fully supports and loves them and, yeah. and motivates them that's yeah. all i'm saying yeah which, just, which makes sense it, 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 should, just, it, it just makes be. it just makes complete fucking sense to yeah, me yeah but because you not only have you got someone that like in theory is making you happier you've also got it's like an extension of your brain you, 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 yeah, yeah, like yeah. if i'm trying to think of a new idea or decide a big decision on my on a company or execute a certain thing I'm thinking it myself. If I have a second person next to me that I can soundboard and I can yeah. and can in, can say, "Oh, no, actually, that's a bad idea." Or actually, maybe you should do this. Or do you remember last time we did this? Like, it's gonna, you're obviously two heads yeah. are better than one, right? You're going to do a better job. So it's just logical that would be the case. Yeah, yeah, mate. And, but I want to pivot onto uh, more your energy and obviously how all it, that mate. all that came all that came about. Way, let's just get 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 get, get cans of yeah. You can get the can. Okay, you can get the, let's get the get, cloudy get, lemonade. Get the can on the screen. Cloudy get lemonade. The is this is this is why you should watch on YouTube. You know what I mean? Look at that, mate. Look at that. that. Look at that. So like, talk me through the process that you've had to go through because I know the process. I think the process. I think in off the top of my head when we talked before, the process was about eight, 12 months long, wasn't it? To, yeah, get, to yeah. bring this to, to bring this to the world. Like okay. I want I really want to understand and, and get you off the relationship advice coach. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I could I could see you getting like you're looking at me like Frankie. Gotta get, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> so okay, so straight away, yeah, an energy drink is a ball lake. Like again, it's a few things I've got into that I, I, I get into them and I'm like, oh, why have I done this? But like I'm, it's awesome. It's super exciting. I love it. I'm like excited to take over the world, but energy drinks are hard like there are lots of other categories like that but energy drinks in particular for a number of reasons right so firstly there aren't that many places that make and print cans right like drink really? cans they're not they're not they're not like you know it's not as easy as like making clothes for example yeah, yeah. right and the ones that do the likes of like sprite and coke and whatever heineken are making millions and millions and millions and millions of cans a week right yeah when you make a, a can and print a can, they have to make a new line set up differently to make your can, right? To print your can. So why why a, a company that are getting paid a shitload to do make millions of cans for Coke, why are they going to stop their line and set up a new line for your drink? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because you're because they're doing million cans runoffs at this yeah. point and you're perhaps printing what, three hundred? 300,000? Not as many, yeah. So so like well, they have like MOQs, where right? they have minimum order quantities, which for, for drinks are high. Like, so for me, with more CO energy, bear in mind, I've never done this before. This is the first one I've ever made a drink. I had to commit to three quarters of a million cans. I had to, I had to commit to 750,000 cans even to get a look in. Is that, even to get a look is in. that one runoff or? That's, that's the, th yeah, the first run, the three flavors. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah. So a quarter of a million for each one. Yeah. We had to commit to that. And that's even just to get a look in. There were others. If you want to do a bigger can, it's potentially more. It's potentially 500,000 per flavor per can. Right, okay. So like it's wild even just to get in there. That's a lot of money. That's a big commitment, right? That's the first thing. Then like there are so many things that can go wrong and there are so many issues with like, you know, the fulfillment and the logistics and the everything. There are so many little interesting things I didn't realize at the time um, that I'm kind of learning, you know, as we go. Uh, th there are other big issues like are just the margins, like cans, drinks are heavy, right? So yep. when, when you sell like a 12 pack or a 24 pack, whatever it is, the shipping is expensive. Like when we first launched, our shipping was, for some people, was really expensive and everyone's like up in arms. Why is it so much like... That's what it costs, mate. It's expensive to ship cans. So we've worked really hard to get our shipping down. And when you buy on Amazon, the shipping's free. You get free next day delivery, although we're out of stock right now, which is annoying. But like the shipping's hard. So you don't make a very big margin, right? If we were doing the, if this was a powder, like, so let's say you buy um, a, a tub of like en, a, a pre workout or an energy drink powder, yeah? yeah? And that makes you 20 servings. That one tub to ship, cost you nothing right whereas shipping 20 cans of this is expensive if you then sell that a million times you've literally made 10 times the profit on the powder than you have on the drinks right because the mar the margins are just slim because of that shipping basically so why not a pre-workout then um because it i don't really take a pre-workout that often didn't make sense you know what i mean like, it's not my like I, I work with my protein for a start so it'll be a conflict i like working with them and it's just not i don't 
I don't really take pre-workout, so it wouldn't make sense. Like I said, energy drinks, going back to these, I've drunk an energy drink every day of my life pretty much for the last 10 years. I've drunk every energy drink under the sun, so it made sense for me to do that because that's what I enjoy. That's what I do. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to do it better because I feel like there was a big gap. And, and is, is, is that, in essence, not just because you did it, because you thought the others tasted a bit shit, to be honest? Basically, yeah. There's a few things, right? So the first thing is, I always used to drink like a monster. I used to drink like a 500 mil can of monster, yeah, now... If you train, like I train seriously, I'm like I'm into powerlifting, I like lifting, squatting and, and deadlifting heavy, right? If you are lifting and you drink a 500 milliliter, like a half a liter can of carbonated fluid before you train, it's fucking horrible. Like who wants half a liter of fizzy drink in their stomach? It's not optimal at all. So I thought I want to I want to get the same caffeine and the same you know the same benefits from this can, the same enjoyment, but I want it to be smaller and I want it to be less carbonated. Now, when you find a lot of these smaller cans, because they're obviously smaller cans exist, right? I'll be honest, most of them taste like shit. Like if you go and drink, I'm not going to name names, right? But go and find five smaller energy drink cans and drink them. I guarantee most of them taste like shit. They're not very nice, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, why can you not make a smaller can that has a lot of caffeine in, but tastes nice? And, and that's what we've done. So we've put in, this is 200 milligrams of caffeine. So that is more caffeine than a Monster, more caffeine than a Red Bull, more caffeine than, you know, numerous other energy drinks. It's in a smaller can. Is there a legal amount of caffeine you can put in? Yeah, can? yeah. There, there is, yeah, there is. So like, what, we, what is we the, can't sell it? this in certain countries because it's got too much caffeine in. But like, for me, the priority was making the product that I wanted. Do you know what I mean? What, why, why 200 mil? Because I noticed a couple of energy drink companies are doing 200 mil. Why is 200 mil optimal? 200 milligrams, like, is in in one hit is a pretty optimal amount of caffeine, like, in terms of human consumption and for, like, a performance and a cognitive, like, benefit. That's a good amount to take. So it just ties in nicely. I mean, it's also on the limit of what you can do. So that's the other thing. And it's also you've got to bear in mind, caffeine doesn't taste very nice. So a lot of the drinks, the small drinks you taste, taste like shit because the caffeine tastes horrible. So... Obviously, if you go too mad with it, you do, it's very hard. You got to put more in to cover I, it up. I didn't. I, mean? I didn't know that that caffeine had a taste yeah, yeah. like that. It tastes like shit, mate. So that's why it's that is why some of the smaller cans don't taste very nice because they haven't masked it very well. Do you know what I mean? And is it obviously there's different places you can get caffeine from, isn't there? There's like yeah, green yeah. beans, like yeah, yeah. even worse if you get yeah like right. supernatural caffeine. It tastes horrible. Yeah, it tastes like shit. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed that a lot of these energy drinks that have the green bean caffeine or say all this that, and the other, they taste like dog absolute shit. shit yeah. yeah, yeah, which like, is like what you're gonna sit there every day. Like, yes, granted, like natural caffeine, that's great if you can. But are you gonna sit there every day and drink a drink that tastes like piss? Like, I don't. What do you mean? Like, for me, this is one of my one of my favorite times of the day. Maybe the favorite time of the day. Yeah, he's drinking that before. I, you I'm, I get up in the morning. I do some work. I like take a uh, Luca to school. Like hang out with my, with my other son, and then I have like um, maybe like a half an hour window before I'm going to train. I'll drink a morsel energy. I'll just I'll you know read about Arsenal. I'll, I'll do a little bit of some kind of like easy work, emails, whatever it is. And I really enjoy that like decompression that time. And the drink's really nice and it's perfect. It's not mega fizzy. Like it just works really well. I really enjoy that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to, like, again, going back to before the, the in the pre morsel energy days when I'm drinking like a big monster or rain or whatever, it's just this, like, you drink a bit of it, and I'm like, I've still got so much left. I'm having to force this super fizzy, massive can. Like, yeah, for me, this just works. This works perfectly. Also, in terms of sport, like, we have lots of athletes now, lots of sprinters, climbers, swimmers, like BMX riders that drink this because you can, because it's not uncomfortably fizzy you can drink it whilst you're trained like it works really well really well in that sense have you how so obviously 12 months to formulate talk me through the, the, the this process then so you decide you want to have an energy drink which yep. is which is wicked yep. then you have to then you what the fuck you do from there yeah, they, like, <laughs> what's yeah. what's what's the what's the fucking whole process so obviously you have to source a place that's gonna so there's three stages you have the making of the can that's in one place. Then you go somewhere else to have the can printed. Right. Then you go somewhere else to have the can filled. That's the three stages. Right. But, but they're all different places. They're all different order quantities and luck. But, but but before all that happens, mm -hmm. do you have to put like a vision board together of how you want the brand and, and the aesthetic yeah, 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 to be yeah. and all that stuff? Yeah. Like, is is that is that the first? Yeah. The first piece. So, so step one was like, why are we doing this? Like, what's the goal? Like, again, who who are we trying to sell this drink to? What's the, what's the why do we need to make this drink? And how did you formulate that? Just off again, my perception, what I felt at the time. Like I said, going back to that, 
I wanted a smaller energy drink that still had a lot of caffeine in that tasted nice. Like I didn't, it blows my mind. You can make a drink, make millions of cans of a drink and it tastes like shit. Like how is that, do you know what I mean? Who's, yeah. who's okaying that? Like yeah. you have a whole company, how is it going around the company? They're like, yeah, it tastes like shit, let's go, let's make 10 million cans. Like why didn't it make it taste nicer? That's what we did. Do you know what I mean? We, we got, I knew the flavor profiles I wanted. We got hundreds of flavor samples. If I drunk one and it tasted like shit, Get rid of it. Don't make that. Do you know what I mean? Find the nice ones. We found the nicest one. We then honed it, and that was our. You know, that's how we chose our flavors. Like yeah. uh, back and forwards and backwards and forwards until we got the flavors right. And yeah, because that's key. Like yeah. ultimately, you can have the best ingredients in the world, but if your drink tastes like shit, who wants that? Do you know what I mean? It's just madness. So, the for me, number one was it has to taste like so nice. Do you know what I mean? I would drink this as just a normal soft drink. That's the feedback everyone says. They would drink this. You can get it in a boots in a. A W. H. Smith's meal deal. Like you, you could drink it with a meal because it just tastes really nice. It's just a nice tasting drink. Nah, mate, I, I agree with you. It does. It does. It does taste a lot better than a lot of the energy drinks on the market. Like to be totally honest with you, there's a there's a especially those like I said with those ones with natural caffeine. The natural caffeine. Just a small. Cans, I did right? not. I didn't. Uh, that's something new I've learned. I didn't realize that the, the natural caffeine tastes like shit. It, that's yeah. what makes it taste like shit. Yeah. Never realized that. But you obviously formulated it on a vision board to get your color scheme and all that kind of stuff. So you've yeah. you've kind of mapped that out your, in your head. And then I presume you've done a kind of avatar for who you kind of think your customer is as well yeah. and, uh, and position that. So once you've got all that together, you've gone wh where do you, you have to find yourself a, a, a partner, someone to work with and someone yeah. who can position this and package it right right yeah yeah so we have a company that does that for us we have a company that helped source the can manufacturing and the and the printing and the filling that help with the fulfillment and you know the the physically storing because we've just i've just made an order for like another 200 odd thousand cans like those cans have to go somewhere in fact more than that's a lie it's like i forget it's a, a lot of cans basically you know they're not going to go in my garden they've got to go somewhere so you know they they help with all of those stages yeah, because obviously, yeah, like you say, having third party logistics as well, and and everything that goes along with that, you know. Yeah. But how? But obviously, when you when you go into a, to a brand like that, that's, that's where you're organising all that kind of stuff. How do you? How have you structured it so that you make sure that you own all your intellectual property, so that you get in, so that everything's all good that way. Just that, like it's my company. Like we made sure in the contract we have, it's very clear that this is Mortar Energy is mine. It's my company. They're assisting in the process. They take a revenue share, but it's mine. Ultimately, I do what I want. I do it how I want to do it. If I'm not happy with something that's happening, we change it because but, it's mine. But as you scale this brand, um, obviously you've got it in WH Smiths now, massive, and we'll talk about that in a minute and how that happened. But as you scale this brand, say that say you wanted to move the flavors and you want to move the the canning and everything every part of this business away from from that cannery and into another one yep. is that something that you have the rights to do with the way that you structure the business yeah it, it, i can i can do whatever i want with it yeah yeah it's yeah, mine like yeah. ultimately more your energy is a, is a concept yeah the, the physical what's behind that can be whatever do you know what i mean yeah. it's, it's a, so you it's a, own the rights to the flavors is what i'm saying in, in essence yeah the, the whole the, uh, the yeah. whole thing the whole thing is mine yeah so when you when you create a flavor is is, is there some form of a way that you protect that flavor so another brand can't steal the flavor and use it and some some form uh, like, of it? Uh, like you gotta bear in mind there's only so many flavors do you know what I mean you're not gonna come up with a crazy new flavor because it's mo what, what is there? Do you know what I mean every you go and look at like a, I don't know you know a monster? They have about thirty thousand flavors. Every flavor you could ever imagine has been done already. So yeah. all what I focused on is taking flavors that I like that people like, but making them better. Do you know what I mean? But basically, like first one is like so we have strawberry uh, strawberry crush, right? How many like strawberry drinks or strawberry energy drinks do you see? You don't see any really. They don't exist, which blows my mind because for me, strawberry is like the number one flavor. I love strawberry drinks, right? So that was the first thing, but. Yeah, we, we just took, like, we're we, we gonna have more flavors coming obviously in the future, but we've just taken flavors that we wanted to make that are popular and made them taste nicer than the drinks you already get. You can get, you no, know, cloud lemonade, you can get cloud lemonade drinks already, but ours taste nicer. That's basically was my goal. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and when you obviously, this, this, You've obviously then gone and positioned that in WH Smith, which WH Smith for any Australians listening is a massive, it's a massive uh, retail store in the UK that you can st you can put your drinks into. To get into WH Smiths, 
fucking phenomenally hard to get yeah. a skew in WHO, especially yeah. when you're put into the meal deal package. It's like the equivalent in Australia of being in Coles or Woolworths or something like that. So talk me through that whole process of... of of when you've you've obviously created the brand, the concept, and everything else, you've packaged it up. Do you have to go and then pitch it into the store? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, and, and we we've spoken to so many. We have so many ongoing conversations with various companies because we want to get everywhere, you know. Um, but exactly that. Yeah. Now, what was unusual is us to get it that early. Like you don't. It's very very rare for any new company, particularly an engineering company, on day one. But before before those drinks existed. We signed our deal with W H Smiths. We were in W H Smiths before the drink what, even before existed. You even tasted before it? the physical can was uh, existed in real life. Had they tasted it? No. Nah. So how 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 have you done that? Because oh, have they tasted it? I think they, uh, that's a lot. I think they had samples, but the physical can. So what you're seeing here, yeah. Oh yeah, this this did not exist at that point, right? Yeah. What what we you know what what they brought into was that. We obviously had all the renders. We had the whole concept. We had everything about it, and they loved it. Now, there's other factors. So obviously, me being who I am, like I've done a, I've had a, like a best-selling book before. So they sold my book. So they know who I am. They obviously that adds to the kind of lo- the legitimacy of it. It's not some sketchy like person or some sketchy company. They knew what was behind that, but they went for it because they loved the drink. They loved the concept. They loved what you know what we were trying to do. The branding, everything about it. You know, the brand ethos, all that stuff. They loved that. That's what they brought into it. Um, which was amazing because, again, there I know companies that have been going for three, four, five years that haven't or are only just starting to get into wholesale, into you know, into shops and stuff because it's so hard to do. What I didn't realize as well, being naive, there are so many energy drinks. There are hundreds of energy drinks. You go on Amazon energy drinks, the rankings go down to like five hundred. There's so many energy drinks, and there are so many that I'd never heard of that are huge that are selling millions and millions of cans. Like Hell Energy, never heard of it. They sell millions of cans. They're huge. I mean, there are so many. There's it's so um, so diverse, so yeah, competitive. Yeah, yeah. There's so many out there. Like, let's get ready to rumble. I forget the guy's name. The guy, the ring announcer. Yeah, he's got an energy drink. Like, what, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean, it's this, this. There's so many out there. So it's so competitive. Getting on, getting on the shelves. Like, yeah, t- Tyson yeah. Tyson Fury's got one. But I tell you now, it's it's awful. This is what, yeah, <laughs> I, again, I don't want to pass comment, but a lot of energy drinks taste like shit. I had, a, I had, a, I had a crate of it given to me, and I, I, I and I like an energy drink, and I was like, mate, I gave it away. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I like, I like yeah. Tyson. I like, I like everything about him, but I'm not drinking that. That's yeah. fucking horrendous yeah but but it just goes to show you if you get the flavors wrong you're fucked that's what it's not even yeah i don't know it's again there are energy drinks and this goes for any product there are products that are really successful that are shit that don't aren't very nice because you can if you're an influencer you can sell i could sell i could make an electric toothbrush and sell some because i've got a following do you know what i mean but uh, shit i, I like more sure energy for me is about making an amazing product like Almost, you know, 99.999% of people that have drunk that drink, they love it. They say it tastes amazing. They'll go and drink it again, right? Because it is an amazing, it is objectively an amazing drink. That was my goal, first and foremost. You know, there are things I could have done to increase my margin or to, to make it, you know, more uh, more scalable or make more money. But I've made the drink as good and as nice and as good, you know, as as, as effective as I could because that's what I want to do. Because you know I mean? you, because ultimately you've made it because you want to drink it before training yeah. first and foremost. I want it to be a sick drink. If you drink can't, if you can't nice. drink your own drink and enjoy it and yeah. get the benefits from it in the gym, then it's kind of a bit pointless exercise, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, really? I know people that have released products they don't use, they don't like themselves. Yeah. That's wild. Like for me, that is more sure energy is the best energy drink on the planet, in, in my the, opinion. I it, strongly believe that. Isn't that crazy to think though that people are releasing products? Yeah. And, and and this is something I see all the time. People are releasing and putting their name to products yeah. that they don't even fucking use. They've never even seen before. And they've before, never yeah. even seen before yeah. and talking about it. And yeah. it just baffles me how people think that there's longevity in that and that they think it's and they think it's optimal that they should do that with their brand. It's so short sighted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%, but it's, so, it's like prevalent. So what is your vision in terms of like for the next 24 months with this thing to, in terms of like numbers and projected figures in terms of revenue and turnover and all that kind of stuff? Um, so it, from, for you, yeah. so again, going back to margins, yeah, you need to sell a lot of cans to make a margin. Like, so for example, with Morsi Energy, right? Um, in our in our first year, so we're like, what, not even, I don't know, less than, Less than six months in our water energy lives, right? In our first year, we're going to make a loss, like a pretty 
not a big loss, but we're going to make a loss. And, and that's like very common. Pretty much every, you know, that's, most, that's, that's I, I think that's goes. most businesses, really. Particularly with, with, with an energy drink, because again, the margin is so slim. So unless you're selling 100 million cans in year one, which no one's going to do, the, the mar- unless the, you're the, Logan Paul. The profit's not there. Yeah, exactly, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. But even then, I guarantee the money they're making is going straight back into making drinks, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah, that, yeah. you have to, otherwise, to keep up with that demand, right? So, yeah, we're, we're gonna, then going into year two, what, the, our goal this year is to get a big, we want to get a big retailer. So like Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Asda, Morrison's, you know, if you're watching, get involved, right? That That's the goal is to get at least one of those because that's like next level. That's the plan. So um, I can actually help you get into Shell because I know the, uh, I'm, the the woman's a good friend of mine. Yeah, so we'll speak. Yeah, okay, actually, I'm being serious. After the podcast, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll give you a phone number. Okay, she's, sick. She's 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 sick. Look, okay, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so exactly that. Now, the 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 irony is not irony, but like the funny thing is that one of getting even W H Smiths like when you get a, a deal with a big shop like that, you have like what's called a gate fee, or you can get marketing fees, which basically basically means you give them a shitload of money, right? Because for example, you know when you go into Sainsbury's, there's Monster everywhere. Monster are paying a lot of money to, to get that. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, it's not, they're not doing them a favor. That's what happens. That's how it works in, in wholesale. Depends on how big you are, you know, and how successful you are, how much those fees are, but you, you basically have to pay to get and those And that's spots. the gate fee. Gate fee, market fee, different ways you can yeah. package it, but essentially you give them money in order for them to sell your product, right? Because they can sell, you know, there's there, there are people queuing up to get in those shops. Do you know what I mean? That is so competitive. So when you get, if we were to get a Tesco, for example, it would be amazing, but the, there's going to be fees involved and beyond that, far beyond that, the number of cans we're going to have to make to keep up with that demand, that's a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're talking about potentially millions of pounds you've got to put into that to make enough cans to you know supply the demand and because they want to know you can guarantee the supply yeah well because it's there they're, they're going to sell if you put them in you know i know we're going we're selling well in WH Smith, like we're selling we sell brilliantly everywhere because it's an amazing product so they're going to sell but you've got to keep up with that do you know what i mean and when you're say a year down the line you're okay because you've had that year of sales the, the revenue stream is coming in and so it comes in you put it into more cans it comes in you put it into more cans yeah. we're not there yet so the money we're putting in is just my money. Do you know what I mean? So like it is, I guess it's a gamble, it's a risk, it it's can be like daunting at times, but that's what you've got to do to get to that point, particularly with an energy drink. Anyone that has a successful energy drink that's gone through that initial phase, like fair play because it's, yeah, it takes a lot of, you know, a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of kind of sacrifice to get to that. So after year one, you want to be in the position where you're selling how many cans? Uh, I would like to, my goal is... Going into year two, I want to sell like 10 million cans a year. That's my goal. Wow. So so basically year one. Does that become profitable at 10 million cans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If So this is the other thing to point out, right? If we didn't do the WH Smith deal, so if we were just selling on the website and on Amazon, we'd be making a really a nice profit. I'd be making a nice profit. But that is a very narrow-minded approach. I mean, because... Amazon's great to be fair. That's scalable. We're going to sell millions and millions of cans on Amazon. We've already sold a lot, hundreds of thousands, right? But the website, for example, we make that if I sell a can of Morsio Energy on our website, I make like 70p. If I sell a can in WH Smith's, I make like less than 10p, 7p, whatever it is, right? But the difference is on my website, I am only selling to people that follow me already, which is, that's yeah. great, but it's, that's only what it is. It's never going to, that's just, that's a very limited, small minded approach, right? When I sell in WH Smiths, even if it costs me money, I am, uh, we've so far sold, I don't know, whatever, a few hundred thousand cans in WH Smiths. Those people that have brought those cans, some of them, of course, are my audience. A lot of them are people that have never seen me before, yeah, don't know brilliant. who I am. I've bought the drink, they like it, they go and buy it again. That's how you grow a company. That's how you scale. That's how you sell 10, 100, 500 million cans and is getting out into yeah. the world. So that's what you have to do. So for me right now, it's not about making profit. I could change it. I could just sell it on the website and make good profit, but that's boring. I want to take over the world and sell a billion cans. To do that, you've got to get everywhere and you've got to take those hits. And you want you want people to know the energy drink before they know you because at the end of the day that is that is aligned to your original goal and your original goal yeah. is yeah. that you don't want to be just even though it's your name people don't know you as yeah. your name uh, and it, we're, we're getting there already we're yeah. already there the, the sales we've had at Amazon like 
I can tell you now, a good chunk of those are probably a, you know, a good majority don't know who I am. They brought it on its own merit. They got on Amazon. It's a high ranking. The reviews are amazing. They they go and buy it. They go and buy it again. Like, and that's only gonna, you know, the, the ratio of people buying more show energy who are not my followers, who don't know me, is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as we grow. I had the same conversation with Joel, who's another YouTuber, Dads versus Girls, Dad v Girls. He he was saying to me that the people that buy uh, De- 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 Des View, um, the clothing brand, there's now influencers reaching out that want um, pe- want clothes from his brand that don't, associate that clothing with them yeah. which is which is where you want to be essentially yeah. when once you, you'll you'll know because once you start getting people reach out for sponsorships and that that don't know you as as the youtuber don't know you as the, as the fitness guy then that's that's when you're starting to get critical mass and that's when you start yeah. to get the you know the the, the true pivot that you wanted yeah. and it becomes more than just your brand yeah you know it becomes something a massive extension of you i think it's yeah, brilliant yeah. mate i think you're onto something. Yeah. No, mate, it's exciting. Like I said, that's that's what it's all about, isn't it? At the point I'm at now, it's about doing fun stuff that's like I want to be able to look back and be like, that was fucking wild. Like that's my that's the plan basically. Mate, and, and in your personal life, we 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 sat here in the gym at the at the back of your garden, but I'm just looking out this window and seeing this phenomenal, phenomenal house that you're obviously documenting the journey mate, yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's been a long road, but like it's it's now at the point where it's just ludicrously exciting. Like it's cut the house is literally up, like it's all going. Yeah, it's gonna, when it's done, it's going to be. It, nuts. It, it's got to it's got to be um it's got to be a proud moment when you look out at something that's going to be worth like two and a half, maybe four million quid, um that you've built yourself with all this hard work. You've got yeah. to you've got to sit there sometimes to yourself and think to yourself, "Fuck me, I'm doing all right. I've, I've I'm proud of myself." Yeah, mate. How I feel like you know. We, we've put and we are going to put a lot of money into this but like what else are you spending money on I feel like a house is number one right like yeah. you're going to live in it that's like an investment it's your, it's an investment in your life like so I feel like owning a house is amazing building your own house is for me is like a life goal that's like yeah. we've literally designed this house we're going to have a slide in it. we're going to have a pool up we're doing we're, we're making our dream house exactly as we want it yeah. and for me that's like one of the coolest things I'm like buzzing about that because this is literally exactly what we want. We're making a house, do you know what I mean, as we want it. I mean, I got two two trains of thoughts on it because obviously, like I've, I've I'm mortgage free and I own my own. It's an apartment, beautiful apartment, um, and I have two trains of thoughts on it. Sometimes I think to myself, oh fucking hell, like this, this is good. It's because it, it takes away the pressure and it's nice to have a base that you go back to that you know that you own. And then sometimes I think, fucking hell, like there's a lot of capital tied up in this that could be used to facilitate other things. It's like, but I think there is a comforting thing in 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 owning in, in owning the place. You know, you can always go back to. You can always yeah. live in. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, especially with the, like you, when you're a dad and you have kids, I think I suppose it's something that you want to provide for them, isn't it? Yeah, it's different, isn't it? Like you said, just that. If you're a single guy, then you can definitely, I can understand why maybe you wouldn't want to own a house or maybe it doesn't make sense at that point. But for me, it's very different. Like, yeah. well, I want that security. I want that consistency. Yeah. And also, you know, it depends where you're at. But for sure, there are times when owning a house doesn't make sense. It's not, you know, you, you'd be better off spending that money on whatever growth and other things you're trying to achieve. The point I'm at now, like I said, I'm good. I'm set. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it, this, is, this was a good time to build a house because... That we we can uh, and like that's what do you mean it's the thing that I've always wanted to do like it's a cool like achievement I mean obviously there's the, I, I do feel strongly that like if you can get a mortgage and get a house you should because ultimately you know I know people that have been renting for like five ten years and you're talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds they're putting into rent yeah. which of course it's supplied them somewhere to live but at the end of that period of time. They haven't. They had they, they, that money's gone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas you put it into a mortgage, you own that house. It, like I have two trains of thoughts on it with that as well, and I've kind of iterated this over a period of time. I think if you're someone who's working in a in a job, um, and you're you're earning your thirty forty thousand pound a year, or you're earning your eighty to hundred thousand pound a year if you're in Australia or America or whatever. If you're someone in that predicament. I'd probably have the opinion now that yeah, you should probably um, buy a house because that's 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 probably going to be your only asset, or you want an asset that you're paying down over a period of time. If you're a a, a business owner who's in the pursuit and got something that's a cash flow business that's that's pumping out cash every week, and you've got that, and you want the flexibility and you need to fund your business, you're probably better off putting the money in something that generates you higher cash flow and and living flexible life because the money's worth more in your cash producing asset, aka your business, and funding that and funding you more employees and more growth than it is 
in in that but it, it, it's the two trains of thought there's no right or wrong I'm just saying that's that yeah, yeah. I, that I, used to, I used to I used to I used to it depends yeah. entirely on who you are what stage yeah. you're at yeah. everything so many factors there's so, there's, sure. so, there's so many factors and so many factors um that I've learned over the hun- last 130 odd episodes of this podcast whatever um I used to have a real closed mindset to it after after I'm like, because I, because obviously I bought one, and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, and I'd, I'll tell everyone else not to do that because I think your money should be in better things. But I can kind of see fours and against it now on lots of different topics that I never saw before, and that's just something that comes with time and perspective. So, yeah, yeah. do whatever's right for you, but ultimately, at the end of the day, as long as you, as long as you're you're happy with it, I think that's the main thing in it. But you, yeah. mate, you've smashed it. That's a fucking beautiful home that you're building, and your family are going to be fucking more than happy living there. I tell you now, bud. yeah, mate, I'm mate, honestly, smash life. But mate, honestly, I think um, all, all I've got to say to you is, mate, like, congratulations on all your success and all your on all your coming success, you know. Sure, but thanks. Bro. Um, before we go, I just wanted to ask you about the, the you you. There's a lot of people that make a lot of the money in the creation world that that haven't probably looked after it as well as you or used it in terms of like things. Is it what kind of structures are you doing? have you got in place to kind of make sure that you've not fucking wasted all your money and stuff? Like, I mean, to be honest, like the biggest thing is just like not being a moron. Like I know that like, again, I think a lot of it comes with like maturity and like I'm 37. Like I, I've, you know, I've been around for a while. So I think I am mature in some senses, pretty immature in other senses, but like in, in a financial business sense, like I, I don't just throw money away. Like I know people who do what I do that make good money that spend stupid amounts of money on cars and clothes and going, they spend like thousands and thousands on going out, like going out, like drinking, yeah. buying meals, like so many ways you can rack up like huge amounts of expenditure on stuff that maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe you love it. It makes you happy. Great. But like in the, in the long run, I think there are probably lots of ways you can be sensible. Like I, I don't, you know, if I want something, I get it. I don't deprive myself. I deliberately go and get things that I want whenever I want them, right? But it depends on your stage. Like when I was earlier on in my YouTube, in my kind of YouTube infancy, or I started to get some money from it, it wouldn't make sense for me to build a house because I didn't physically have the money there for that. Yeah. Maybe I could have scraped it together, got like a massive mortgage, but then, you know, probably not a good move in the long run. So it's about timing and doing things at the right time. But if you are looking to you know, to, to make money and build revenue streams and have whatever investments and stuff, then just spending a shitload of money on, you know, fairly meaningless things probably isn't a good way to go. So I guess it's just about, yeah, like I said, not being an idiot and and, and having that foresight and, and being mature and thinking about what you want. Like a lot of like, like I'm not a very materialistic person. Like all of my clothes are in Gymshark because they send them to me. So I just wear them. Like I can't be asked to go and buy clothes. I don't really get the urge to go out and buy loads of expensive clothes. That's not my thing. I appreciate some people do. But in my experience, like buying expensive things, if it serves a purpose, that's great. Like if it's a camera, for example, and that's your job, that makes sense. That's fantastic. But things that you're buying to, to make people think you're, you know, you're, you're doing well or whatever, like lots of those things, you buy it, the novelty wears off. You're then just left with this thing that's cost you loads of money. So I guess just, you know, think carefully about where you're putting your money. Is that the best? You know, of course, you have to get a balance. You should buy things that make you happy and make you excited and you get a buzz out of. But at the same time, it's moderation. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, 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 you yeah. should not be getting to, you know, I used to work as a teacher. Some of my colleagues, the last few days before payday, they're literally like, they're like desperate. They're like, oh my God, I need that money. And I'm like, what? Well, you're an adult. How, how are you not, do you know what I mean? Budgeting yeah. better. Like, you know yeah. how much money you're making just don't spend that amount. Leave some in, do you know what I mean? Yeah. In yeah. reserve, like budget. Do, like it's just for me, it seems obvious, but some people obviously haven't got that ability, but that's something, a skill you can learn, so, right? Well, it's, it's the art of self-control is, is, yeah. is literally what you're, what you're teaching yourself and, and, and it applies to every area of your life. So why wouldn't you learn it? Yeah. Like, and you, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's essentially what you're saying is like yeah. have, have the self-control and the, so the two things that people can take away from this podcast is, is about learning the self-control one and if they want to take their life to the next level it's like learning to to do things that even when you don't want to do them just because you know like you with the gym simple as that yeah but if there was one piece of golden wisdom that you've learned in your life now from everything that you could just drop on this audience that would help them take them further in life at this moment from what you know now compared to what you said last time what would it be 
Oh man, there's so many things. I think for me, a big thing, and I think it's something that separates me from some other people is like, it's just doing stuff. Like it's not letting, I think lots of people have, you know, they, they kind of um, have like invisible barriers and like glass ceilings and things that they perceive as, as barriers to doing stuff. So yeah. like a great example, right? Uh, when you're when you're driving on a road, yeah, and there's like a slip road to turn off, or you're at a roundabout and there's two lanes, and everyone goes into that one lane, they queue for like a mile. You're like you're queuing for a junction that's like a mile down there, right? Or you're on a roundabout, and there's two lanes that are going left, and everyone's in the left hand lane of those two lanes, and they're queuing for ages and ages because like, oh, he's doing it, so I'll just do it as well. We all just do the same thing. That's the safe thing to do, like. I mean, if this is illegal, I, this is a I, this is a story. It's fictional, but <laughs> I'll go to the end and then I'll just come in when there's a gap. Yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not dangerous. I'm not like cutting anyone yeah. up. I'll there will always be a gap in front of a lorry. There's always a big gap. I'll go into the gap. No one's been affected. I've saved myself ten minutes, half an hour, whatever of time and stress. People don't do those things because they think they can't. I mean, you can. Like I've been doing that my whole life. Like. I, like just do stuff if you if you want to achieve an outcome and there is something that's stopping you from doing that then find a way around it don't let other people's perceptions of you or what you think is someone's perception like you go to a gym and you think oh everyone's looking at me they're not no one gives a shit like just do stuff do things you want to do doing something awkward in public you're never going to see them again who cares like just do the things you want to do and i guarantee if you do something that makes you uncomfortable something that you wouldn't normally do something that you you have a perceived like barrier to doing that if you make yourself do it i bet you like you know you, you think oh i can't do this because this horrible thing's going to happen you do it guess what nothing happens like you managed to do what you wanted to do that's what i've learned nine times out of ten i do something risky or scary or something that oh should i do this i do it it works brilliantly. There's no problems. I do it again. Like, that's what, do you know what I mean? For me, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my biggest thing. Like, I'm not a, a lunatic. Like, don't take stupid risks that, are, you know, could kill you or could bankrupt you. But doing things that maybe are a bit risky or maybe someone else wouldn't do or maybe you think there's going to be potentially some repercussion, if you think it's the right thing to do or you think there's going to be a benefit to it, just do it because the chances are you'll be fine. And then you think, oh, hang on a minute. Maybe I can do this more. And then with, before you know it, you're doing doing mad, like, sick, fun, awesome, like, fulfilling stuff. Yeah, and it's always easier to, to ask for forgiveness than it is for yeah. permission. So that's that's the way I, I operate my whole life. And, like, the more you do it, the better you get it, and it becomes 100%, easy. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. Well, guys, that is the man, the myth, the legend, in person, as I promised you, as I visioned in my mind, because I vision, <laughs> I, vision, I vision everything, mate. I vision everything. Um Mate, thank you very much for, for coming on. Thanks for having and me, mate. guys, appreciate it. Matt Morsier, aka Matt Does Fitness, like I promised you, like I said I would. And do me a solid favor. You do me a solid favor. Look, there's a lot of podcasts out there that I don't think give you as much value as this. I don't think love it as much as this. And I don't think you can feel the energy through the mic as much as you can when I get on this, right? Do me a favor, share it with all your mates if you get value, share it with your friends. Um, you know put people onto it subscribe to all the channels i'd appreciate every piece of support that you give me to get this out to more people more faces yes and let's do, uh, it. do it mate do it do just it. go and make it happen let's otherwise it. frankie said he will he can actually find like through ip address you can find where you live so he did say something about like what do you say like i could terminate him burning yeah. houses down yeah. i'll probably i probably fucking could to be fair but i'm not that kind of fella but anyway i work on the side of the light not the side of the darkness Guys, do me a solid favor, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate you as always. Much love. Let's go. Guys, do me a solid favor. Drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next.